Hello everybody, I welcome you back to the part 3 of SAP Build Process Automation Tech Byte series. In this episode, we shall understand the various ways through which a business process or the business workflow can be started or triggered. The business process has a start and then comes the set of steps or activities that has to be executed and then it ends with a desired outcome. This is the process flow. In order to start the process, there are four ways. A form can be created within SAP Build Process Automation using a form builder. Once the form is created, the data has to be filled and then submitted in order to start the process. API trigger. If we want to trigger the process using the external APIs, for example, if we have created a sales order application using SAP Build Apps. Once the sales order data is filled and the sales order is created, it can pass on the data to the API trigger of Process Builder and start the process. Third is the event trigger. The event is generated from the external system. For instance, on the S4 HANA public cloud system, if a purchase order is created, then an event is generated. This event generated will be captured on the BTP system. How this happens? On the BTP system, there is integration suite service. Within the integration suite service, there is a component called event mesh event mesh can be configured to capture or catch the event that is happening on the S4 HANA public cloud system and this event data is passed on to the SAP Build Process Automation in order to trigger the process. Schedule trigger. In cases where no manual intervention is required, the schedule trigger can be used. The schedule trigger can be configured with the the data date time in order to schedule the start of the process here is a short summary of all the ways i have explained so far let's jump right into the system and see how the various forms of triggers can be created configured and tested in the first two parts of the tech bytes we have created the project called sales order management project in order to explore the triggers we can create a copy of this project by uh, selecting it and uh, saving it as a new project i'll save it as explore triggers I'll give the same as description and save it as a new project. If you have not yet watched the first two parts of the tech byte, I will be linking them here. Please do go and check them out. Now the project is copied. Let's go to the project. There are four forms and one process here we can see the sales order details form has been used as a trigger we shall delete this by clicking on remove now we get uh, this block how do you want to start your process and add a trigger here we see the various options that are available to start the process submit a form this is what we have done in the first two tech bytes please do go and check it out how to use form as a trigger for example if i choose submit a form the system will propose all the forms that are already existing within this project and also have the option to create a new blank form. Since we have already explored the form trigger, we shall explore other options in, in this tech byte episode. We shall see how the API trigger works. Click on API trigger. 
the process needs to be saved before assigning the uh, API trigger. Okay, we shall save it. Now we have the dialog box to create the API trigger. Sales order process API trigger. This is the name I have given. The identifier is generated automatically. So we'll create the trigger. We get a message toast API trigger created successfully. So this is the API trigger. And when we click on the API trigger, we see that outputs output fields are already present. These are synchronized automatically from the process inputs. We can click anywhere here in order to see the process inputs. So we go to the variables and see process inputs. The API trigger will receive the data from the external system and it will output some fields. Those fields comes as inputs for the process. So they are they are synchronized. Now we'll uh, go to the configuration and see while the external system is sending the data to the API uh, trigger, these are the fields what we have to use, not the names, but we have to use the identifiers in the J JSON, uh, JSON key value pair. We will be using the identifiers in order to pass the data. And these are all the mandatory fields. So once we create the API trigger, we have to save and release the project. The API trigger can be used to start the process from the Postman client. We have released the project. So under the trigger tab, the trigger what we have created just now it appears. Once we have released the project, we have to also deploy it in order for it to accessible from the external systems. So the project has been deployed. Now uh, we have to go to the control tower and fetch all the process related information after deployment and in tenant configuration we have environment style click on the environments and we have deployed our project to the public environment select the public environment and this is the project a sales order management project explore triggers this is the project and uh, here when we go to the triggers we can see the trigger what we have created the sales order process api trigger it is already here we can view the trigger this is the url what we are going to provide in the postman client and uh, this is the payload definition what we have to provide in the postman client here is the url link what we will copy this and uh, we should we shall go to the postman i will be using the postman web version we shall go to web.postman.co slash home and here we have an option to send an api request here we have to make a post request create a new request and here we have to create a post request in order to trigger the process. Here is the API endpoint and uh, we have to authorize it. The authentication type will be OAuth 2.0 what we will be using and we have to configure the token for this. For example, I will be giving it as DR token. And the grant type is the client credentials for access token client id client secret we have to go to the btp cockpit and from there we have to we have to fetch the service key of build process automation let's see how to do that in the btp cockpit we have to go to the instances and subscriptions sap build process automation here is the service key we have to click here so we go here the endpoint is already provided 
and uh, we need the client secret client id and the url we have to take this and provide in the access token url and to add the o auth token for the access token url and for the client id this is the client id we'll just copy this client id and paste it in the client id and the client secret here we have the client secret we are all getting it from the dual process automation instance service key alt pro will let it be and now we have to generate the new access token authentication is come it's uh, complete we can see the authentication is complete and now the token is already generated the access token and we shall use the token in order to connect to the btp system dual process automation service the token is added now uh, we have to go to the body and we have to provide the payload data here we'll choose the raw and uh, uh, provide the we have the definition context everything the payload is already here we'll copy this make a copy provide it here we can see the definition id this is the process or the workflow definition id and send a post request by providing all the data customer i can give as a b c d i will keep it very simple and four five six seven eight is the order id order amount it is a numeric value so we can give it as 5000 and expected delivery date it has to be passed in the json format your month date format so we shall execute and see how it goes so now we see a new resource was created successfully our request has been uh, successful we shall go to the build lobby monitoring process and workflow instances we see the process instance has been created and it's and it's running we shall click on this here we have all the process related details here is the data what we have passed from the postman client customer is abcd this is order id order amount and expected delivery date all the data is captured here and uh, the process and and the order has gone and the order has been waiting for the approval for that we need to go to the my inbox app ah yeah here the sales order four five six seven eight this is what uh, we have created four five six seven eight is the order what we sent and uh, this is the order what we have sent here we see the sales order is waiting for the approval all the data is reflected here this is what i will see as a sales manager it has come to my inbox for approval i will review the data and provide a message sales order looks good approve it task has been processed successfully again we go to the process and workflow instance we can refresh it in order to reflect the data what the message i have provided sales order looks good that is also reflected here now as a sales representative i will be receiving the confirmation notification for that i will go to inbox again and i see your sales order has been confirmed this i will be seeing as the sales representative and uh, i will submit 
and the sales order has been now refresh now the sales order handling process has been completed successfully the instance is executed with all the approvals and notifications so this is how the api can trigger the process automation or the workflow i hope you have found this episode helpful all the resources that is required for you to implement this api will be provided in the description event trigger type and scheduled event trigger type will be explored in further episodes thank you